<laughs> I joined because a hero of mine was going to be a guest speaker. Uh, I'd never really heard of the organization before, and online we were part of a, of a little um, former listserv type thing. This is before the days of message boards called the Loop, and uh, that's how I discovered uh, what the NCM was all about. And uh, Mark Drucker was going to be the guest speaker in the Las Vegas convention. Uh, I got an opportunity to, to go and I went down to that convention. I remember very distinctly going down there uh, pretty pretty confident about my skills and what I could do and what I had been doing. I'd been running theme park operations for like six or seven years at that point and I'd been teaching people to draw for a long time and I was sort of a big fish in a small pond so I was uh, uh, pretty cocky. To, to put it bluntly, and then I got down there to discover uh, how humbling the experience was to see these people that uh, were doing this incredible work, and I, I actually credit the NCM for um, getting me off my rear end and getting me working hard at my art again, and I had become very complacent, and um, they certainly cured me of that that year, so I owe this organization a lot, and I'm happy to give back uh, in the little ways that I can, so. These are, um, I'm going to start out just showing you some illustration work that's not from MAD. Uh, very little, because um, I want to get to the, to the MAD stuff pretty quickly. But uh, free, as a, I've been freelance illustrating for about 20 years now, and the, the scary thing about freelancing is that you don't have a steady paycheck, so uh, you never know how many jobs you're going to get. I've, I've got freelance disease, meaning that I can't say no to very many jobs because I'm afraid it's the last time my phone's going to ring. <laughs> Which means that I usually have way too many jobs going on at once and uh, things are a little chaotic and hectic, but um, it, you know, you get to sleep when you're dead, right? So you might as well just go ahead and do all the work comes your way. This is a little piece for um, a magazine, a political magazine, back in, during the primaries of the presidential, it was what, 2000, right? John Kerry. And, uh, not everything I do uh, has anything to do with uh, caricature. A lot of my jobs just are you know, funny cartoon images. And this is one uh, from a workplace poster about uh, the hectic tax uh, day. Most of these pieces are done digitally. Um, this is a little piece for a, a movie magazine, and the article was about uh, famous Hollywood blunders. Rumor has it that uh, Peter Jackson went to a studio, went to Walt Disney Studios with a little project called The Lord of the Rings, and told him, never work, get up. <laughs> that was a series of illustrations. One of the fun things about being an illustrator is you get to, you get to, you don't, they don't just call you and say, hey, draw this for us and, and, and then go away. They want you to uh, contribute something. You know, they, they want you to come up with concepts and ideas and gangs, and that's what I find some of the fun things. So, so having Mickey kick these guys in the big group was my way of this all. This is a little cover for an advertising piece for the Napa Auto Parts and digital. This is a cover of a magazine during that same uh, presidential um, race. Uh, actually, this was 2004, was it? Very good shit. 2000 was Fighting over healthcare. This is a digital painting. With, uh, I've experimented a little bit with losing the line work. Um, doing colored line like, like this piece is. Um, that's black line, you know, with color inside the lines. And, and that's a, it's a nice look, but it limits you as far as, as how many clients really want to see that kind of thing. Line and color. Uh, some magazines and, and certain clients just don't like that look, so you have to. Uh, Example of that. This is the cover for uh, Info World magazine with Bill Gates giving his uh, plan of the future. Uh, so it's still my work, you know, it's still my style of drawing and everything, but I just don't use lines, lines as much. Uh, things are a little softer, the lines are colored instead of, uh, instead of uh, black. That gives it a little softer. And here's an example. This is from Scholastic magazine. This was the cover of uh, one of their one of their uh, elementary school magazines. And they, Scholastic, they do a lot of work for them. And uh, very little of it has anything to do with caricature. This was about the crime and things, obviously. Uh, this is 
a poster for Teachers Discovery that they sold for uh, um, uh, science rooms, like science classrooms would buy this and put it up. Uh, or as I like to call this, the job that almost killed me. <laughs> it's a giant post. I mean, this poster is like 34 inches wide, so it's humongous. Well, you know, there's a lot of jobs that I, that I titled the job that almost killed me. This one is uh, for Matt, actually, but it's an advertising piece. Matt, uh, this is for ballpark pranks, and uh, every once in a while, um, Matt does a little ad insert where a company buys, you know, a little pages of ads and they do these mad like uh, parodies of their advertising. This is this bizarre ad campaign where they have this, this hand, his arms would come out of people's stomachs and steal their hot dogs. It was uh, really, really surreal. <clears throat> this piece, I don't think uh, uh, anybody's ever seen this before, but this was for Hardee's. And uh, I got a call, sometimes I get calls just because I work for Matt. So this guy calls me and says, hey, we want you to do one of those mad fold-ins that uh, Al Jaffe's been doing for like 100 years. And I um, uh, said, well, why don't you call Al Jaffe? Because <laughs> he knows what he's doing, and I don't. And they, and they said, well, we don't know how to get a hold of Al Jaffe, and we'd like you to do it. So I gave it a shot. And let me tell you, not that I didn't have a great deal of respect for Al before. Uh, these are really hard to design. Anyway, this is uh, about this really horrible hamburger that they had for a while. It was just a cheeseburger with really a cheese steak on top of it. So it was like a heart attack on the bun. <laughs> and this was the before, and then we folded it in. Showed you the burger. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, this is Keelan, are you in here? I did this in Keelan's living room when I was down there on vacation. He was gracious enough to loan me his computer and CT. This is a, a CD cover for a band called uh, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band. And, uh, it was a wraparound cover and they made a poster of it. Uh, it was a real fun job to do. I liked it because, um, partially because of the black, the dark suits, and had a lot of fun trying to, uh, to use as much black as I could um, and still show some volume to the <coughs> photos. I occasionally do work for sports teams. This was for the Minnesota Twins, my local ball club. Uh, it was a t-shirt design. And uh, for a while they had the nicknames the Little Piranhas which were given to them by uh, another manager in the American League. This was actually rejected by Major League Baseball. I had to redo it because they wouldn't allow us to have the uh, logos of the other teams being defiled. <laughs> but when I show this piece, I always show the rejected version. The other one before. It just has the logos just kind of floating there. Uh, this is a cover for an insurance magazine. You know, it's like the dirty little secret of all illustrators that most of the work we do are things that nobody's ever heard of. Um, even guys, you know, really giants in the industry like Chris Payne and guys like that, Steve Rodner, these guys do work for these little tiny niche magazines. They pay very well and they need illustration and, you know, they contact you. This is for a magazine uh, for insurance actuaries. It's about the healthcare industry and insurance business. Again, it's a, like a half digital painting, half line art. It's for the same movie magazine. It was a story about how studios uh, interfere with making films and get uh, their executives in, in the way. And this was my little concept that came up with the 50s uh, science fiction poster, you know, the attack of the killer uh, studio executive. And when we finished it up, we was actually we did like a poster edge to it. It was kind of tearing. It was posted on a brick wall. This is a little job for uh, this company. I do a lot of these workplace posters for. And there's a mistake in this one that I didn't catch, and neither did the art director until after it was in print. Does anybody, anybody know what the mistake is? Well, that's on the right hand. What's that? 
Two no, it's, it's simpler than that. Huh? No, no. What? Two different teams. That's right. That's right. If these guys are on the outfield trying to catch the ball, they should be wearing the same uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so wrapped up in, you know, adding some color and getting things to be fun that I completely, and we didn't catch it. It was completely printed before the contest. <laughs> That happens all the time in Matt. Those guys are oblivious. <laughs> this is the cover for Library Home Journal, another little kind of half-painted job about, uh, again, this is a problem solving. You know, they, they said, hey, we want you to show an image of um, how these libraries are kind of under siege and their, their, their budgets are being cut and everything's shrinking on them and they're nervous, but they're dealing with it. And this is when they came up with the survivor sort of And it's just a goofy uh, account of that. That's for a financial magazine. This is another one from Scholastic. It was the cover it was about how candidates are using YouTube and MySpace and Facebook and stuff as uh, campaign tools. Um, and that's the cover of Tiny Mac magazine. Don't ask me why. It's giraffes versus uh, kangaroos. That's just what they wanted. That's what I did. This was for a little job uh, for a school library journal magazine, a story about kids who like to read magazines instead of, you know, playing their video games. And that, that the story was about how magazines are still a prominent part of a lot of kids uh, growing up. And, like, and Matt was one of the ones that they requested. So. Um, Robert mentioned that I'm a member of another organization called the National Cartoon Society. I'm actually a vice president now. And uh, this is a little job I did for their uh, t-shirt. Every year they have a convention. And this, was, this one was in New Orleans. And there's a bunch of famous cartoonists. Uh, Mike Peters is in the Superman suit there. Um, Sandra Boyden, who does his greeting cards, very famous greeting card artist. Uh, the uh, guy in the tux is uh, Mark Tatuli, who does uh, Heart of the City, Leo. And uh, the guy in the back is uh, Tom Bialik, I think. Got it? Yeah, he does uh, Funky Mickey. And, uh, and then that is uh, Mort Gerber, right? Gerber. Gerber. Uh, famous New Yorker cartoonist, Playboy cartoonist, right? One of the one of the old school legends. And, uh, every year they, they love to do this uh, t-shirt design, which is a lot of fun. This is a little different for me, uh, a real digital painting, or as, as real as I get, as close as I get to real digital painting. Uh, this was a bizarre job. I got a call from a guy who is making a movie, and it was about uh, it was a superhero spoof movie, and um, he wanted me to do this animation sort of images for the animation for the credits. And uh, then he calls me at the last second and said, we need two 40-inch tall uh, oil light paintings for set, for the set. And this is the main villain, and he's we're supposed to have these like adventure paintings of himself on the wall. And uh, so I, I did this one. There was another one that's where I'll call it. was an interesting, uh, sort of a different, you know, getting, thinking outside the box and getting out of my comfort zone is, is always fun. Nerve wracking. They blew them up and printed them, but I mean, the, the image was that big, you know, digitally. It was 40 inches. It was huge. Yeah, it was like 300 kilos. It was just, just gigantic. Um, I painted it kind of small to get about 12% zoom, you know, so I did didn't, uh, I wasn't painting his pores or his nostril hair. How did I put it up? It was, uh, now this one was in the Star Tribune recently, and uh, uh, Minneapolis Star Tribune, of course, Brett Farr is uh, the quarterback of the Vikings now, and this was before the season, and they, they couldn't decide which one was he was going to be. Was gonna Breath bust or breath cure. So this was like flipped over. So the front of the newspaper section had this as a full page illustration of the back had 
the other one and flip the gold to I vote for Fred Bust, by the way. Okay. And this is the, uh, the credits that I was telling you about. You're not going to be able to hear it because there's no sound.
whatever it takes to, to soften them up, that's the way to go. Okay, step six, corner him and show the work that you slaved over for weeks that you are sure he will be blown away by. Then have your dreams shredded by a soul-crushing, brutal critique of your mediocre work that leaves you emotionally devastated and doubting your man. <laughs> Really looking for people that can handle that end of things because they've got a lot of uh, 